It's about that time of day again. Welcome back to Nightly Newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. It's Thursday evening, August 25th, 2016. Well, I'm back from my spa getaway in East LA yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Kidding, of course. And boy, do we have some markets setting up some great opportunities for a summertime Friday. You know, we got Janet Yellen hitting the stage tomorrow morning from the old Jackson Hole Symposium, which means our plan will be to find those reliable opportunities early and finish up what has been a fantastic third week of the month of August. Crude oil, gold, and euro are bullish, while the S&P is range bound as we head into this summer Friday trading session. Now, you know me. I got a great newsletter for you guys tonight filled with reliable opportunities to look for tomorrow. But remember, the only place to watch the full length version of this video is here on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. Don't forget, if you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, there's a link in the description of the YouTube video, which of course is only a small portion of this video. Follow that link. Come join me over here on the blog at sidewaysmarkets.com and watch the full length version of this nightly newsletter. While you're here, don't forget, if you're not a member here at School of Trade, I've got a free pass for you to come out and attend our trade room. Make sure you register for the mailing list in the lower left-hand corner. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Download all the charts you see using tonight's video. Follow that link below the video to download all today's charts. And don't forget, join the free trial on the right-hand side of the website. You're going to learn more with me in one week on my trial than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. And I'm always hanging out here in the office here in Los Angeles. Hit me up on the live support button on the right-hand side of the website. There's also a live support button on the website here at schooltrade.com. Hope you guys have a great week so far. Again, sorry I was out of the office yesterday afternoon. You know, sometimes I've got to get the job done here as it comes at us. We're back here, though, this evening. Another great newsletter for you guys. Before we jump into our charts, let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule. Tomorrow's Friday, August 26th. The very first thing I think of right now is, is this is a summertime Friday, and it is the one, two, three. It is the it is the last right. It is the last full week of the month of August. We assume there's going to be some light volume tomorrow. We got Janet Yellen on the schedule tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. It is a summertime Friday. You know, you know people are going to use any excuse to get the heck out of the office and a summer Friday with Yellen from Jackson Hole. We definitely anticipate tomorrow to be an early in early out scenario tomorrow like it is pretty much every Friday, but a summer Friday last few drops of the month of August we got to expect tomorrow is going to be a relatively low-volume environment after probably 10 a.m., maybe even earlier, 9.30, 9.45 a.m. Looking at the calendar for tonight, we do have some big news coming from the CPI report. Our good friends in Japan, 7.30 p.m. tonight. Be aware of that if you're going to be trading the London session. And then tomorrow morning, we don't get much out of London until we get to 4.30 a.m. We're going to the GDP from our friends in Great Britain. And then, of course, we got the 8.30 GDP, international goods, consumer sentiment, and of course, oof, Yellen speaking at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, the Yellen speech at 10 a.m. tomorrow, we do not expect her to say anything new, right? It'll be data dependent, inflation targets, job growth moderate, blah, 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 blah. We've, we, we've heard this, the same thing out of her mouth, right? What, 15 times so far in 2016. She's backed herself into a corner about raising rates before, before the end of the year. So she might give a little bit of a tip on that. That's the one thing I think that uh, traders will be listening for tomorrow in those really kind of boring speeches that they always give. But listening in there tomorrow for kind of the tip of the hat of confirming a, a rate hike before the end of the year. And that would be really the saving grace, right? If, if Yellen really wants to help us out tomorrow morning, she'll go right into talking about how she is she is or is not going to raise rates before the end of the year. Because everyone's wondering right now, third week in September, if we're going to get a rate hike at the next at, at the next uh, FOMC meeting, right, in, in middle, late uh, September. So that's about the only thing that I see her really kind of talking about tomorrow that can get this thing moving. What I always try to do is I always assume that we're not going to get nothing from her, right? So we're, let's assume tomorrow that we have, again, uh, you know, she sticks to the script. Everything's pretty much nondescript, low volume. We don't get much more after 10 a.m. If we do get something after 10 a.m. tomorrow, be careful. Don't go chasing after moves. Remember, when we see those big breakaways that are all news-based, those big moves are oftentimes just going to fake out and go in the opposite direction. So if we start seeing this thing get a little bit cranky, you know, here tomorrow morning around 10.15, 10.30, depending on what time she actually gets into that topic, 
then we want to see, okay, where's it going? What's our new direction? Hold a pullback, hold a retracement, and then we'll have a new trend. So just be careful tomorrow chasing after any low volume breakouts that are likely going to be fueled by whatever's coming out of the mouth of Janet Yellen tomorrow morning. Again, assume she says everything by the script, nothing new, nothing interesting, and the market sits right and goes really low volume. The really hard part is, is that tomorrow morning, we get all of our news out of the way at 8.30. Then, of course, we go to 10 o'clock. Hard part is we may not have anybody still left at their desks by the time she speaks tomorrow. So be aware. Uh, again, expecting it to be low volume. Summertime Fridays are always going to be a little bit more of an excuse. Traders get up behind their desk. Right? I'm looking forward to getting a good weekend started tomorrow afternoon as well. Right? So be careful tomorrow. Again, don't be too aggressive when Janet Yellen starts speaking. If it's really low volume, sit tight and wait. And if it does get one of those low volume breaks in one direction, be very suspicious of it until it holds a pullback, right? And then, you, and then of course, we'll go forward from there with all of our students. Don't forget, open up our, well, our chat room is always open, but we'll be in our chat room tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. Eastern time, trading the London session, and of course, at 8 a.m. Eastern time, trading the U.S. session with all of our students here at School of Trade. It is great to be back here. Once again, I'm sorry about missing you guys yesterday evening. I, I think I gave you guys a heads up on that on Wednesday night. Bottom line, though, we got some charts here, crude. S&P, gold, and euro. Crude is bullish and trying to finish rotation up to the highs of a bull channel this evening. The bulls have control, but look at those wicks. Those big wicks we see at the highs tell us this may be turning into a wedge. And if that is the case, then we will look for the next buying opportunity back at the lows. We don't want to buy the high of this wedge. So what's a buyer to do? Well, buyers will be looking for a breakout pullback above the potential wedge high or buy with seller failure back at that wedge low. Look at that gap down there at 46.81, right? That thing's just that thing's just staring at us. Uh, sellers don't have any proof right now. In fact, the most recent move was very strong for the buyers, which tells us that any pullback will likely be seen as a buying opportunity for the bulls. Sellers need to get a strong break down below the 46.81 and then manage to hold the pullback if they want to have any hope or any confidence in selling this market down to the lows tomorrow at 46.42. As you can see, it's a pretty obvious bull trend right now. We're making higher lows, right? Higher highs. Really, the big thing right now is really this area right here, right? Recency is always important, but we're getting a lot of really important clues here right now. The very first thing I see is, is look at these wicks, right? These wicks, they stand out like a sore thumb, right? You can see they're, they're pretty big wicks on the top of that candle. And so you're going, all right, well, let's look back in time here. So the buyers come back out, right? They, they break to a new high. Look at that first green candle. The first green candle doesn't even close above the high, right? It closes back down. Then you can see, of course, the next green candle, right? Tries to break out and they're successful, but oh, they get one tick to a new high and it comes back down. Those wicks tell me deep pullback, right? Those wicks tell me something's up here. Why aren't we finishing the rotation back up to the high of that channel like a good bull market should do? Well, let's look left. We look left and we immediately see here we have, and this, this is one of those times you know, you're not really going to be able to pick up on this, right, until you see that. Right, you're not. We, we don't make it a habit of drawing trend lines across the highs like that. But when we see these wicks, right, we go, hmm. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but that doesn't look like a very strong bull market. So we look left, we can easily see that trend line coming overhead, and we go, oh, well, maybe this isn't a channel, right? Maybe we're not. We're not rising to the high of the channel. Maybe we're bouncing off the high of a wedge, right? And so now this wedge starts to form. Right, it's going to be a lower high. Now, I've got to really zoom out far on this one. You can see here that wedge target puts us, well, I'll be darned, all the way to $48 a barrel. Now, I don't like to make predictions, but it looks like we're pointing in the right direction, right, back over the highs here. we got to get the trigger, though, first, right? So the wedge target right around 48 bucks a barrel. I've already talked about my concerns about Yellen and Co. tomorrow, right, spoiling the fun for us on a summer Friday. So hopefully we get a nice big run here tomorrow, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm not going to hold my breath. So with that, with that bull wedge, now we know buyers really have a, well, it's pretty simple at this point. I want to be very, very careful buying this next pullback, right, even though we see this real strong move higher here, right, this strong move higher tells me that. 
I'm going to be a little bit weary of buying that next pullback. In fact, one of the hard parts here is going to be getting this thing to continue for a breakout pullback either above the high of this range. And when I'm looking for a breakout pullback above the high of that, of that, of that wedge, I want to see strength here. I don't want to see these... Right? I don't want to see these big wicks like we're seeing right now at these highs right now. So, you know, if it just pokes its head out and then comes back in, I don't want to be a buyer into that high because it will likely be a trap. Strong break, big, big full body candle here. Show me you mean it. And then we can look for that move up to the high. Just don't buy into that measured move, which, of course, is expected to be right the big target here, at least in the short term for those bulls. What is more likely here now is, is to see this market rotate lower now. Channel rotation, wedge rotation, we rotate back down to the low, and then we look for the next buy on the way up. What you can assume now is, is this trend line acts as support. This moving average acts as a trap. And we look for sellers to try to sell the pullback. They're not paying attention. They don't see the rising support level. Breakout, pullback, and go, right? So those are the two situations you want to look for, right, on the buy side here. One, of course, would be a seller failure at the low of that wedge. The next, of course, the moving average comes up, and we're looking to buy that pullback. Now, what if price goes lower? We do have a gap down here at 4681. What really is going to be a challenge, though, is if these if we if we really collapse hard then this resistance trend line shows up right so now you got to get back above hold the pull back there right if it does happen to really break down really what you want to see here is you want to see this market come back down hit that gap fill fill it get above that trend line and then we have the seller failure from there Right, so as we go higher for the bulls, strong, 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 strong breakout pullback here without buying into resistance. Be very careful about buying this pullback at the moving average because even, unless unless this thing literally shows up here as just one big strong green candle, and even then, I don't really want to chase after it. You're going to be worried now about buying into the high of that trend line, assuming it pulls back and doesn't break higher. Right, so. If you, if you did want to play a little bit more aggressive on this thing going back to the highs, not the first pullback, but the second one, right? That would be the one, right? We call it a second long off the low in our in our trade room, right? But I'm, I'm weary at buying the first one just because, again, seeing the wicks up at these highs. What really love is to get this thing down into those lows here and really get this thing nice and low so we can buy this thing back up gap fill, battle zone test, right? Whatever the case may be. What if you want to be a seller right now? Being a seller is not going to be very easy. The strength of this move higher tells us that we should expect buyers to be seeing every pullback as being a buying opportunity. It's probably not going to be very easy here until we can get and stay below this 46.81, right? So get and stay below this 46.81. That'll probably be the only spot here right now that we'll have a shot to get these to, to at least have enough room for these sellers right now. As this price comes down, we expect buyers to be buying here. We expect buyers to be buying here. We know the most reliable buyers will be right down around those lows. If the sellers show up for the party and they can really break down, breaking down is not enough. They have to pull the pullback, right, and then hold below that 4681 for a move back down to that low. And at that point, we'll have a new bear channel to work with, right, and we'll be looking for Right, we'll be looking for opportunities here to keep selling with more information tomorrow. Either we break high or we pull back and look for that failure at that low and then back up to that high. Targets, of course, high channel, high wedge, measured move, and double up area overhead. Let's keep going. How about some S&P? S&P is range bound, trying to finish the rotation back to the high of the range this evening. Buyers have control at this point, and assuming we don't finish the move back to the highs, we'll be looking to buy the next pullback. If the bulls can't get in before we reach the highs, then we need to get a strong breakout pullback above the highs, right? Show us they mean business, or look for the next opportunity back to the lows of the range. Sellers need to wait for either the completion of the move back to the highs, then look for buyers to fail and sell at the highs, okay? Or we need to go all the way back down to that low and get a real strong breakout below that uh, 67.4. I believe, I believe John...